in Asheville, North Carolina. And I thought it would be a good idea to just talk about some of the things you can do with the measurements that you take for Tracebook or that you download from Tracebook. Uh, so first, I just want to say a big thank you to Chris and Nick and everybody at DMB. They've been super supportive and um, it's really cool for them to allow me to come and use the space and measure their speakers. So thank you. Um, so one of the many interesting things that you can do with measurements that you get from Tracebook or that you measure for Tracebook is to then uh, work on figuring out how to combine those sources. And that may be just for practice, um, uh, or more commonly, it's going to be on you know a show that you have coming up tomorrow, and you want to kind of wrap your head around what it's going to look like to combine those sources. So you can see here that I already have two prepared, and these aren't on Tracebook yet, but they will be in the next few weeks. So this is a V7P and a V sub. And uh, so you can pretend like I've just downloaded them and imported them into my audio analyzer. And there are two things to note about these. Number one, they were measured at different distances and at uh, with different delay locator settings when they are exported. So I can't really do uh, an apples to apples comparison and, and make an alignment preset from these um, because I would need to untangle those two differences, the distance and the delay locator settings. But I can just look at them and make sure that they are phase compatible and that um, I can see what an alignment might look like and then create kind of a template so that when I actually see them in the field tomorrow, I'll have expectations in my head and I can have something on the screen to compare it to. Um, now let's take a quick break and I'll show you around the space a little bit so you'll have an idea of what I did to set this up. So I'm going to hide this and then get my other camera. Okay, so here's the space again. Let me turn down the sound. Um, so I forgot to take a photo, but I started with the speakers here so that I could make some comparisons and uh, just do a distance measurement. And I had a mic over there. So I had both speakers right next to each other, grill to grill, equidistant from the microphone. And you'll see that I, I practiced with that for a little bit. And um, I didn't make too much of an effort, but then I did set them up back over here, sort of pretending like they might be covering some fake weird audience where the speaker is really low and the sub is just on the ground over here. And then I had a measurement position back here that I just decided I'll practice with this being my alignment position and I'll try to align those two sources using um, the information and the practice that I did previously. So back over to the computer. Okay. Okay, so that was a little tour, and here we can see that I just have stuff downloaded from Tracebook, and I just played around with some delay until I could find nice overlap, nice matching phase alignment there, and then I can also take a look at the sum between them, and I can see that I'm getting a nice amount of summation nice flat line here when you have these level re uh, relationships. So I'm going to mute these now and move on to what I did next, which was setting them in the center of the room and uh, measuring them equidistant so I could actually come up with a preset. So here's the V7P and here's the sub. And the interesting thing that I discovered is that I don't need to do anything. So if we go and look at the phase graph here, we can see that they're already aligned and I have no delay, no gain change. 
And so I discovered that I have a nice preset of these two sources that is just zero milliseconds and normal polarity. And what I then learned from this is that when I get in the field tomorrow to use these, all I need to do is uh, equalize any distance offset. And that'll be my time alignment and then I'm done. I know that these two sources work together out of the box like this. Uh, so then the next step was to actually take some measurements with the speakers deployed a little farther into the room. And let's take a look at that. So here we can see now, of course, we have more ripple now that uh, more of the room's getting involved and there's more reflections and I measured a head height. And so now all the things we uh, expect to see when we take real measurements in a room are happening. But what I like about this process is that, you know, it's not scary because I've done a lot of work ahead of time to just make myself accustomed to seeing this data on the screen. So I, I looked at it in, you know, kind of a semi-anechoic state with very few reflections. And then I did some practice with them uh, next to each other. And now once I'm seeing them in the room, it's no problem. I'm, I'm ready to look at them. And I didn't add any delay um, before I did this. So I could see what it was like to um, add the delay that I expected. That was a weird way to say that. Here, let me explain it this way. I added zero delay because I wanted to see if I could then uh, show it to you here in Crosslight adding the delay. So I took my laser disto and I did some measurements from the alignment position where the microphone was. And I found that they were about a meter off. And I know that a meter is about three milliseconds depending on uh, speed of sound. And so I just gave three milliseconds a shot and that ended up working out. So I'll switch over to looking at the phase graph now and we can see that, yes, it is messy. But again, I was expecting to look at this kind of stuff. And so I can see that I have pretty good alignment here. And we can look at the sum between them and I can see that that's pretty good as well. So another big benefit of having these measurements from Tracebook is that I can try to see through the noise. So for example, if I go to, I think it's over here, if I go to mute this, and then I go back to my original measurement here, then I can align these two guys to make them sit on top of each other. And then I can go over and look at the phase graph. And it's not perfect, but you know, the, the measurements farther into the room have a lot more noise. But I can take a look at this red one that's cleaner from Tracebook and try to see through that what it's supposed to be. So all these extra wraps in the phase trace, I know I can just ignore. And same thing with the uh, sub-measurement. Uh, one more thing to show you that's uh, fun to practice with sometimes. Sometimes I like to, if I have time, just investigate what does average phase look like. And so I try to keep my microphone in the coupling zone between both sources. Um, but here in the memories window, I took a total of 12 measurements, six for main, six for sub. Um, and then I aligned all of them to a single position and then I created a complex average. And so here's what that looks like. You know, we see more build up, uh, room gain from the sub. And then here's the phase graph. Let's move the reference to somewhere sensible. And what's cool about this is that it, maybe it'll be easier to read if I make this window smaller. 
Um, we've got nice alignment here, and that is after adding, I think, about three milliseconds of delay again. Yeah, there it is. It's a tiny number there, but it says three milliseconds. And so all of these things, just practicing, um, you know, developing confidence in the tools and uh, developing confidence that I can take this preset that I worked on before and then just add, equalize any uh, path length differences and uh, have multiple ways of verifying that I have source alignment once I actually get in the field. So uh, thanks again to DMB. I hope this has been helpful for you. And please let me know any questions that come up. Thanks.